Okay, it's 8.30 on a Friday. And I'm here to uh, share with you, as I usually do every day. Um, I'm sharing, can God reject us? And we all know as members of the body of Christ, we're rejected in this world. At least you should know. Because <clears throat> ultimately, we don't belong here. We're in it, not of it. Um, God calls out the members of the body of Christ to show that he actually loves us and is calling us out. And uh, Dean and Chris done a beautiful show on trust. Who are we trusting? We're trusting God. We're not even trusting ourselves. Ultimately, it's God. We don't believe in free will. We don't believe that we have any kind of uh, decision making or any kind of action that is going to thwart uh, the plans of God because we know he's ultimately in control of every little detail as far as scripting the Eonian times. He did it right from the end to the beginning. So ultimately, they, these Eonian times, which are five eons. This is what he's working the wheel in. That's a great potter, these five eons. Now, we're rejected in the world. The world doesn't like us. Get that straight. If you feel like you're part of the world, then fine. Join in. Have fun. Fill your boots. All I can say is that God has called members of the body of Christ to be among the celestials. And we have a celestial allotment not an allotment here in the respect that Israel will be giving its given its due in the coming thousand years. And through Israel on the earth, the rest will come through Israel and the celestial realm through us, the members of Christ's body. We will be reconciling celestial beings. Um, that's a beautiful and amazing allotment to understand and realize that we have this part to play is an amazing thing in God's Eonian plan. So in the oncoming eons, he will be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace through us, the Ecclesia, to the rest of the universe. Okay, so continuing on with this article, can God reject us? It is a good question. For doubters but anybody understanding the truth knows that God does not re reject any of his creation he's drawing it back through Christ and through the Ecclesia which is the body of Christ okay in Breton there's a government agency called ACAS arbitration conciliation advisory service part of its job is to bring together two opposing parties usually workers and bosses to help them come to an agreement <clears throat> I knew a man in London who worked for the ACAS as a clerk. He was not very interested in his job. It was boring paperwork. But what could be more rewarding than bringing two antagonistic people to the end of a dispute? You will notice that the agency isn't called ARAS, Arbitration Reconciliation Advisory Service. The fact that the, it is called ACAS tells you that the agency knows the difference between conciliation and reconciliation. <clears throat> conciliation is the first step in getting a dispute settled. One party always has to be willing to pull down the barrier between set between or barrier down separating the other. <clears throat> we have not pulled the barrier down between us and God. God has. The proof is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 and 19. Yet all is of God who conciliates us to himself through Christ and is giving us the dispensation of the conciliation. How that God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them and placing in us the word of conciliation. What greater message could we feeble, weak human beings have than this? Verse 20. For Christ, then, are we ambassadors as if God as if God entreating through us. We are beseeching for Christ's sake, be conciliated to God. 
This job we have in God's conciliation service is not an interesting routine. It is not an unpaid lowly position either. In Ephesians 3, 9, Paul says that a secret has been concealed from the eons in God. And the secret is to be made known to, this, to the celestials through the ecclesia. That's us. Surely we can't get, be good. Surely we can't be good enough. Thankfully, the evangel is not concerned with the sinner at all, but with God's attitude towards the sinner and with the sufferings of Christ. He has placed in us not the message of judgment, but the word of conciliation. Nevertheless, while we are in the flesh, shall, we shall feel rejected at times. With or without good cause, there may be times when we might even feel that God has rejected us. Our feelings can fool us. Our feelings of rejection may not be based on facts but feelings can influence the way we look at the facts. Feelings may affect what we think of God. We may feel unable to return God's love. We may be sullen towards him or feel hurt. So what are the facts? The message we have for others is the message we have for ourselves. So think about it. This message is for ourselves too. We are beseeching for Christ's sake. Be conciliated to God. Be at peace. <clears throat> why can we why can we be confident in saying this? Ephesians 3, 12 and 13 reads, In Christ Jesus, we have the boldness and access with confidence through his faith. Wherefore I am requesting you not to be despondent at those of my afflictions for your sake, which are your glory. Look again at what it says in 2 Corinthians 5:19. God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them, and placing in us the word of conciliation. The problems mankind faces are there because all is of God, in accordance with his purpose. Remember, all evil is temporary. For the believer, this is the only time we shall experience death, pain, and suffering. All the bad things we experience are a light affliction, compared with the life ahead, our glorious expectation. This is what Romans 8.18 says, For I'm reckoning the sufferings of the current era do not deserve the glory about to be revealed for us. Isn't it wonderful when two friends come together and settle their differences and are reconciled? It's beautiful when they no longer have anything against each other. It's even more wonderful when, when, when one of the two parties is God. He won't let us down. He is faithful. We can trust what he, say, we do, what he has said. The judge of the entire earth will not execute judgment. Genesis 18, 25. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor messengers, nor sovereignties, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 through 39. When God says he is conciliated, all we have to do is accept that and be reconciled. God has not rejected us. Only a fool would reject him. Therefore, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be conciliated to God. Praise be to God for the riches of his grace. God is commending his love to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Romans 5, 8. So that's the article for today. Okay, so it's Friday. Thank you for joining me every day. I appreciate your support, your love, your comments. I don't comment very much back, but I'm telling you now, I love you all, and I thank God for you. Without you, the family of faith, I would not be here. Any of us, we wouldn't be here. Um, we're here now illuminating that conciliation and bringing it to the world around us. So thank God, be at peace, grace and peace. Have a beautiful weekend and a beautiful Friday. I'll bring something tomorrow and Saturday, or tomorrow, which is Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, and we'll see what comes out of it. So grace and peace.